Grace and peace be with you. As children of God, we are gifted in so many ways. We each have talents to share, time to offer, and treasure to give. And whether it's our effort or our money, our abilities or our ideas, so many benefits come from our giving what we have to the world in which we live. And quite often the benefit of giving our time, talent, or treasure is measured in some traditional fashion, like a person receives food or shelter, or part of God's earth is cared for, or a loved one enjoys our company. So often the benefits are quite obvious. But I would invite you to think about the gifts that you give in any form also as avenues to bring beauty to our world. For example, when you babysit your grandchild, you are certainly providing childcare, but it's really more than that. You are bringing love into view and our world is made more beautiful. When you donate blood, of course, you're providing for someone else's physical well-being, but you are also sharing in the work of life itself and the world is made more beautiful. When you give a donation to the church to support its ministry, whether your gift helps to pay a utility bill or supports a food pantry, you are holding the door open to life itself and the world is made more beautiful. This month, we'll be sharing with you a few glimpses of the ways that our community is making the world a more, a more beautiful place. We hope that these videos will get you thinking about the money, the talents, the energy that you give, and how your gifts just might also be making the world a more beautiful place. In that vein, to start us off, here's a glimpse of how gifts that nurture creation make our world a more beautiful place. Casey and Bonnie are raising chickens. Just think about the time and attention, the, the discipline and the steadfast nurture they need to give to this work. Here's a bit of what they're experiencing. This is Ichabod, little gray, still no name. Daffodil, I don't have food yet, babies. It's coming. So how do they get their names? The girls pick them. Okay. <laughs> and then that's Hermione over there at the water. And there's Hermione. Cannoli. Willow. Is Willow on the stairs? Willow's on the stairs and Hot Lips is behind Willow. Hot Lips <laughs> is the only one I named. I got Hot Lips during the pandemic and I felt like I was Hot Lips Houlihan mm -hmm. in the war time. Mm -hmm. So I named her Hot Lips. <laughs> Casey, look, Casey's got some food. so far today. garden for the chickens. For the chickens, yep. Things that are healthy for them. He's kind of obliterated it. <laughs> yes, there was a lot more in there. <laughs> so what do you enjoy about having them? Um... I just enjoy hanging out with them. They're like so calming, uh, especially when I've had like a bad week at work. I come out in the morning, I usually let them out. And uh, Casey after school would always come home and just sit out here for an hour or so and hand feed them and hang out with them. And they're, they're funny, they each have their own little personality. I would have never thought chickens had their own personality. 
but they do and they each have their own little role like i said hot lips tends to be the warrior mm -hmm. uh ginger's the mother hen she tends to like check on everybody and corral everybody but she can be obnoxious too <laughs> And then out of the younger group, uh, Little Gray is what we call the herder. Like the other day, those four right there were off by themselves, and Hermione, the baby, was way down here, and Little Gray just came and just kind of kept pushing her till she was back with the herd of people. So, so she, they take care of each other, don't they? They do. They really do. And a lot of times, Scuttle, this is the little one eating the watermelon, will brood on the other laid eggs even though they'll never hatch because i don't have a rooster i'll come out and she'll be sitting on a couple of the other chickens eggs like brooding them trying to hatch them for them <laughs> so it is they they build their own little community what made you decide to get, get them it was uh back in april of 2020 during pandemic we were supposed to do a whole bunch of stuff on easter break and of course the world shut down mm. And my niece was like, oh, I started raising chickens to give the boys something to do and it's educational. So I was like, okay, we'll try. And we started out with a, a little dinghy coop and five chickens and uh, we bought books and it was, it, and then we built the coops together and, and we all just like learned different things. Like Casey was my online person. I, I'm old fashioned, I bought physical books to read. And so we just learned all sorts of stuff and they start out as chicks that you have to keep warm and nurture and take care of. And so I felt even though we couldn't go off and do trips together as a family, we did this as a family. When we nurture God's creatures, the world is made more beautiful. The beauty lies in God's creation being nurtured and allowed to thrive. Friends, whether it's with our resources, our efforts or our appreciation, nurturing creation is an act of beauty. How might your gifts make the world more beautiful today?